against CLG. And I feel like this would be crazy, James, if if Dignitas were to take a fall here, because I, I think I don't think you can argue from any perspective that they are our worst team. Crazy things have happened in this tournament already. You're right, Dan. Well, we'll see if. Uh, well, I mean that said, I I do expect a, a Dignitas W again. Uh, one of my favorite teams, Dignitas, of, of the many favorite teams I have, which is almost every team in CS these days. Dignitas starting on a T side. The entire team is here. Two utility men, as uh, we commonly see in the current meta. Hazed, Ethan, and Kusta on a Ethan's position, though, may be undetected by Dignitas, especially with Hayes running the distraction. There we go, two heads for charge for him. And another one, and another one. This is falling apart very quickly for Dignitas. Sandwich position, a rarely played position on a pissed round, and uh, it's less, less one of the less common positions on A in general. If you can get someone there, it can crush around for you, especially with a silenced USP. Yeah, that's awesome that this they found a lot of success there. It's really cool because so often people like to default just to the, the A retake, and I think that's why a lot of teams, you know, they tend to mix in the A rushes, but when they happen, it's pretty cool to have that set up there. And now we're going to see just Deagles here for Dignitas, which is Lovely. I think this is. Uh, I, I'm always a fan of this, just because, especially with a team with all the individual individual skill that Dignitas has, you can very realistically get pick offs here, and make life very uncomfortable. Are you a fan, however, of Hayes' um, close position with no helmet in this round and an over? He's the only person. An, an anti eco up close is uh, not often a good idea. I mean, bearing in mind he's against Deagles. So it doesn't matter on this occasion, but unless he's specifically expecting that, then who knows? Anyway, we've got two CTs down already for the uh, CT side. There are no grenades for Dignitas, so bomb plant's still going to be a problem because they need to cross to the sites. They have uh, managed to maintain their numbers, though, which is brilliant if you consider that lack of utility. And they're, they're playing it slow also, which does create a situation where CLGs have to start asking questions. Do they just hold some, some positions very passively, or do they try to take a risk and go somewhere, get some information? If they do that and get unlucky, then they can run into some more deagles, and then they're down to a four versus two, potentially. So they are just playing it fairly passively for the time being allowing Dignitas to make their move. And Dignitas actually looks like they're going to go for a play onto the A bomb site. We have uh, a somewhat of a split going on with Config, with that uh, Nova he's picked up in Palace. And uh, Kusto will likely be the first point of contact unless this boost comes in first. But that is going to be dangerous. So Broza, I think he must have heard something. Or has he? Now he's going to spot the boost. Magisk is going to have to fall away. And in comes the split. Down goes Kusto at close range. Playing blind spots, but uh, that's going to allow Dignitas to get the kill and the grenades, and that allows the short plan to come in. They've already got position of Connector, so things go from bad to worse for CLG. Cutler with the Famas, he's got a big gun in, as far as the people who are left, so he's going to have to put in great work with these distances. And mp 9s going to suck. There goes Cajun B, two of these three players with Kevlar on the Dignitas side. Cutler asking questions with a defuse attempt, but they've still got that unknown player in Connector to Dignitas. Hasn't, they haven't played their whole hand just yet. All CLG knows that there's one ramp and it's one in Palace. How does this bomb get the Fused for CLG. Time is ticking. So Bros is one of the kit, and he's stuck in Sandwich. He's got 12 HP. He may not even escape the bomb uh, explosion at this point. And CLG, they've kind of given up the round, so what is he going to do? Oh, he's going for the last second here at the Fuse. There's still a player in Connector, though, and he's got no time. He's miscalculated. Magic's will rip his head off as well. Surprising round for Dignitas. They, yeah, they survived with three players. They picked up an M4 and a Nova. That is beautiful, and you can see MSL there with the first shot, and there's the second one. That's why the Deagles are so good. It's just because you can get that long-range instant kill potential, and that can open up things in all manner of ways, as we just saw. So Dinitas, they're going to be rolling into round three with a bunch of AKs and Nova, which is quite fun. I'll have to, have to see how Config decides to Big use that. Popper, pump. Maybe he'll just keep the Deagle in hand for most, most of this, but we'll see. He is going to be the man operating the pit position. He's running an operation with the Nova as his teammates take over middle. I feel like you should aim at the neck with the Nova from this distance, but uh, I have not practiced with it enough. Has a closer spread, having a longer barrel, as seen in our uh, in our Nova video. Cut Lester over towards short, could take some players by surprise, but really, CLG don't have a lot to offer in this round. The two fan masses, the two pistols, config. It's, it can be really awkward around that position where Kusta is uh, trying to deliver that headshot. So he'll have to bide his time. Just make sure nothing crazy happens towards a no ramp push from CLG. He can just retain map control. MSL down to 2 HP. Ideally, he'd want to give his AK up to Config in this situation. But Config is nowhere close. 
So Dignus has to have to make sure that does not fall into enemy hands. Ethan playing blind spots. No one coming in just yet. Config again, just holding his ground. And he's run his fraction enough. Dignus has, should be able to clean this up. Indeed they can. Cutler now, last man standing versus four. Probably wants to save this weapon. Yeah, there's not really that much he can do otherwise. Saving is pretty much his only option. And it does give him the chance as well to get some frags because it looks like Dignitas do want to hunt him down. He might have an AK afforded to him now if he can get himself into shot, but it's not going to really be easy to do that safely. Takes to fighting against Magisk, will not be able to win that one. So Dignitas survive with three players. They are doing very well insofar as survival. They're not losing too many players. And again, despite the previous round to that last one being with just Deagles on, on, on the, uh, the force buy, Really cool stuff uh, from Dignitas so far that we're seeing. And CLG, they are in a lot of trouble. This is not how you want to start things off against a team like Dig. They've got two MAC-10s here to run their anti-eco shenanigans. And uh, there's a single HE on, on Cutler. Interesting purchase, the HE and the PT-50. Maybe he's got a timing. Dignitas, a team in very good spirits before this match begun. Having uh, quite the jolly. They are sitting next to us, if you hear that uh, Danish shouting. That's who it is. Bit obvious though, this is Danish. He recognized that. Anyway, the cleanup is uh, coming in here. That HE is being deployed by Kala. Manages to, at least a P250 will pay for itself. Cost $300, kill bonus $300. CLG back on the buy now. Kusta on the AWP. Very interesting that Kusta is currently in game leading for CLG. Yes, yeah, he's, he's taken so many roles ever since uh, you know he came away from, uh, from Liquids. Time out time. We've seen him do all manner of things for the team. Yesterday, they managed to do a crazy comeback against uh, against the Renegades. Like, t what was it, like 10 rounds in a row to, to against match point to get overtime, and then they managed to actually win in overtime. It's kind of unbelievable that they had that, that amount of constitution, and also that they had the individual performance to pull that one off against Renegades. But against there's, there's never much talking in these timeouts in CLG, I've noticed. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, especially yesterday as well. I mean, when we when we saw them in su such like dire straits, but somehow that seemed to work out for them. So, yeah, uh, maybe it's just uh, you know a cooling period. Let's see if it works out for them. Dignitas far better equipped. You see that CT Molotov? Sorry, the CT smoke around the bottom of connector. You don't often see uh, C sides smoking there these days. It does have its advantages. Four CTs looking over the top. So we have the beginnings of the Dignitas Execute MSL smoking the connector the T-way. He'll uh, probably throw a pot flash in for a teammate later on once they emerge towards that connector position to just take control of the map. So we see Config coming in. He should, uh, there's a pot flash from MSL and he makes his way into connector so far. So good for Dignitas. Yeah, this is really nice. They're very good at playing these positions, but Cutler defends immaculately against MSL and Rubino there on the trade frag. That was beautiful. Dinitas very dangerous when they get these forward positions on middle. They are a team that's very well versed in handling them. But now Config is going to go as well. He was supposed to be somewhat of the lurker. And the bomb is stuck in the window room as well, or the, the ladder room rather. So Dinitas with so many problems right now and just stuck in this position where they have to somehow find a way out of the apartments. Magix is going to take the fight, somehow wins it against the Broza, so maybe there's a chance, but time is against them. They've got a smoke, so they can smoke shorts to get themselves in. Cutler's forcing the issue, though. Going to flash himself, gets the information, they can delay with the Molotov, but again, Dignitas, they need, they need to smoke off short and try and get a flashbang into uh, the ladder room to get the bomb back. CLG, though, they haven't positioned anybody into the shop of B should they get the bomb back. And there isn't time, they've still got two guys on A, CLG, so they could position a bit better. They've got a double peak, though, in the ladder room, and that will be enough for CLG to take that round. And you have to, you can't really fault Dignitas, because I would say they had good, some good risk assessment moving into the ladder room in the first place. You had the pop flash from Connector. Cutler had a good angle, but you had two players at the trade frag. Unfortunately for them, Cutler got both. Yeah, that's, that was an amazing round from Cutler. He got himself the quad kill, but obviously the first two frags was where the, the main damage was really done. That, that's probably one of the, the worst positions to drop the bomb on the map. <laughs> it's so hard to get it out from that position, as we saw the CTs had an amazing setup afterwards. But Dinatas, they still have a buy. Cajun B's looking for the kill on the quick timing of Kusta. He's going to get that one, and that's going to set Dinatas up pretty well here for the mid control that they're after. We'll see the smokes being laid down, and 
they can progress a little bit more safely than than usual, just because CLG are go likely going to be in more of a mind here to be a bit bit more passive. I mean, you don't know how many players are in middle. You don't want to risk going down a five versus three th very early on. Do you wonder if CLG miscalculated the money that was on Dignitas? Because that peak seemed a bit late to me. You can always have uh, CT's flash over connector from A as well to to aid that peak. And they do all have flashbangs, so there we go. I do wonder if that smoke is for the end of the balcony. I think it is. Yeah, it goes dropping down. So that will uh, stop the double peak coming in for CLG, which they were set up for. Cutler being up there with Sub Rosa. Alex Boy harassing towards the B bomb site as Rubino peeks out on Palace. Not going to work out for him, though. Loads of people in Connector for Dignitas. They've lost their Lurker now. Hazed by default. Got a crossfire with Ethan. That flashbang's going to be too deep. Ethan able to get himself the first one. Where's the trade frag? KGB keeps missing his shots eventually. Config's going to be able to get it, but looks like Hazed is still in action here on the bomb site, although he will be denied. Trades all over the place here. KGB has to switch out to the AK. Smart choice. Both of the remaining players for CLG very, very critically weak. A single bullet could do it here for Gage and B. Should he find that, Sabrosa will be in trouble, but he's able to play with the smoke. Really nice stuff there from Sabrosa to make that work. Cage and B definitely had a strong chance to clutch that. But instead, CLG, I mean, they were in a really awkward position, but they've managed to actually come back to a 3-3. Three, three, three. That's, that's uh, quite impressive. Yeah, it's a good recovery in the early rounds. You have to wonder at what point uh, Dignitas might feel a bit shaky. Here's one for HLTV. Four Deagles coming out on the Dignitas team, looking to do damage once again. Rubino has bought some Kevlar with his. He had 4,800, 4, so he'll just buy down to uh, what the rest of his team have. We're not going to see any crazy AWP buys on this round. Four towards B. Config looking for an opening. Maybe looking to drag a rotation towards the... Uh, sorry, four towards A. And he's trying to drag rotation towards the B-bomb site. MSL starting off well. He's going to get taken down, though. But now the numbers stream out. Kusta still delivering, as is Cutler, as is Hayes, leaving Rubino alone. But they've taken two plays down that have Dignitas with this small buy. So that's pretty good, all things considered. We'll see if Rubino can get any more. Spots Kusta, but Kusta too fast. CLG back in business. Very interesting stuff, but the buy comes back for Dignitas, too. Their mid takes have been pretty successful overall, so we'll probably expect them to develop that once again and see what they can play off of. Again, you don't really expect to see consistently, you know, Cutler able to get both of those kills so quickly as he did on the ladder room, which was, uh, I mean, the timing from Dignitas for the trade fragger and everything was, it was, it was spot on. That was very, very good timing, but still, we saw Cutler nail it. Ooh, a bit of aggression here early on. Cutler gonna be over, looking over the top of the smoke. What will he find as he peers over? This is a great position. But no one's peeking, so he will fall away. Very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, Cutler getting the frags. Just good for the one on a short position. Very quickly. Um, we often see people say buy down to $2,000. Rubino had 4800 at the beginning of the last round. And uh, because he bought down to around 2000 they didn't have money from AWP, Dignitas. And we've seen recently that they favored having the AWP onto Cajun B. So I don't know if that was an error on their part. Either way, four players remain for both sides. We see Hayes in the uh, shadow position. And again, Dignitas moved towards Connector with their Lurker on A. They lost their Lurker in the previous buy, caused them problems. This time he's still alive. There's the smoke towards jungle instead. Trades bomb spotted though. See if Ethan goes for the push. Yeah, Ethan is stuck behind smoke for the time being, which does give a bit of breathing room to Adina Tass to get the bomb down. In the default plant position. And both CTs making their way through CT spawn towards Tollbooth, but Config nicely done. Oh, that is so far snappy stuff from Config. No spray required. And that will be the round over. So Dignitas able to keep the pressure on CLG and uh, do even better than that by actually taking some of these rounds away. And they still have so many options to go for on their T side. And all things considered, like the rocky start the CLG have had to this this uh, this this match of Mirage, I feel like they've done well to get four rounds at this point. But this is the spot where Dignitas could really start to take a lead as we see CLG going for the save. Dignitas continuing with five AKs in this round. So we've got the odd flashbang here and there. Cutler looking to abuse the smoke. Ethan on the ramp as well. It can be a surprising position for the T's. Always something you need to check when you move towards those boxes top mid. 
Two players moving out now and again. Here comes Kylo with those flashbangs. Nothing doing though. Config with two, Rubino with one. Config left, config left with four HP. It may need to take a, take a back seat. There's damage to be done by CLG here. Maybe there isn't. Hayes has just died. They're all dead. And now it's time to be alive again. We've got uh, the potential for AWP here from CLG, but uh, we have to be Hayes to buy it because he's the only guy I think that had enough cash, I believe. But they'll opt to just get in the rifles and have uh, somewhat limited utility here. There is a kit at the very least, but, but generally speaking, they will be quite uh, vulnerable to super slow rounds where the grenades will start to run low or, or perhaps be completely depleted. So that's one option for Dignitas. They should realize that CLG have a weak economy, but as per usual, we will see them go for the mid control. Push from Hayes here on underpass. Almost finding a kill. Trade Fragger there in Custa will deal the damage. But, oh, is he at risk? Able to get out of there in time. Very nicely done to escape that situation, Custa. Nice. Headshot to Cajun B. Again, the Lurkers taken down by Dignitas. We'll see, uh, for Dignitas, we'll see if they uh, cope, how they cope with this situation now. Two people, pe two people in mid. Magic's boy in the B apartments at the moment. Looks like they're fancying the boost into the smoke. We'll see if anyone's nearby. Kus is spotting it immediately. Continuation spray from Rubino, and Kus takes it immediately. Big damage done to Ethan as well, but he will trade. Man advantage retained for CLG. Not sure if they saw the bomb in mid. Don't believe they did. See Cutler once again in ladder room, and MSL has a big job to do now. Yeah, very big job. And I think Cutler's in a great position here for sure. I mean, it's going to be hard to win that one-on-one. -on -one. Very doable, but it does, Cutler does seem to be on point. Here we go. Oh no, the timing. Oh, the timing, absolutely unreal. So Brosa knows they're coming. He's the only healthy player remaining on CLG. And all gets an immediate dink there onto MSL. I don't know that they realize his position just yet. Oh wow, so Brosa with another smoke kill. Very timely as well. 20 seconds to collect the bomb for Magisk and find these kills. And these CTs are breathing down his neck the entire time. Finds Ethan, finds Sabrosa. Can he find the bullets though? The connections. Looks like he's good so far. Sabrosa very weak. Somehow Sabrosa still wins it. I, that was crazy. That's, very, that's a very good round from Sabrosa. Uh, I think I had a punch on the table as well over here from Dignitas. But uh, that's good. It's good because the players, they want to win and they want to win badly. Dignitas, a team who have not always reached their potential with regards to even qualifying for majors. They uh, definitely want to do this time. Everyone's been raving about that, but can they find the consistency? Five to five at the moment. Both teams on by once again. No snipers for either side. Nice wide peek there from Sabrosa. Doing the dance, of course, you expect, to, you expect, expect him to peek right and then eventually peek left. He peeks right three times and that does the job. Once again, CLG with strong presence towards short B. Let me see Dignitas looking for an, a raw execute towards A with all five players. Yeah, this is quite the mix-up. They typically open all the rounds with the mid control and the defaults, but this time, instantly on the A bomb side with a set piece. Let's see if the execution of this works out well for them. We've got uh, Hayden in an interest spot there, looking to find somebody, gets config, more players where that came from, that's for sure, but the trades come in, and it's a three versus three. The bomb side is under control, but the CT presence is there behind the smokes as they dissipate. The bomb can be planted, but perhaps not in an optimal spot. Magisk is carrying that, and they don't have a smoke to re-smoke CT, so they don't really feel confident in this plant. Magisk does have some cover, he's trying to bait a peek. Will he be able to get the plant in the end here? Flash comes in. You can see Magic is kind of paranoid in this spot. Really doesn't want to plant. They do have time to wait it out a little bit at this point. Flash, and now the plants will come in. And the three on three commences. Color going top mid. Just making sure there's no uh, Maniac-esque flank from the top of mid as this plant comes in. But there isn't. Magic's boy stuck in uh, the fireboxes. That's not a good place to be as, uh, as a T player. No grenades, though, on the CLG side. Down goes Kus, down goes Cutler. Very quick frags flying in for Dignitas. And once again, they're back in the lead. That was, uh, that was quite a long like, kind of cooling off period there as Magic's trying to get the bomb down. Very strong execution of that set piece. Something that we might see them go to a little bit later. Great detail on the Molotovs as well. Molotov sandwich, Molotov shadow. They don't need to uh, expend men to check those areas. Hayes started well in the ninja position. Once you get into sandwich as a T, you can see those uh, players in the ninja spot. CLG back onto the pistols. 
Back onto the pistols. Yep, it's uh, a grim reality. Maybe they can get some frags with those pistols. We'll see. Marcel has his, his Mac 10. He can be the expendable man, the information man. And just waiting for a pick here. They've got so much uh, map control. And you can see the picks are slowly coming just because of all the angles they have. Nice headshot, though, from Ethan at range there against uh, the Mac 10 of MSL. But Rubino will clean up the site. And that's basically it. This, uh, this round, which is somewhat of just a formality, I suppose, is nearing its conclusion now. Yeah, this round is somewhat redundant as far as, uh, well, actually, Dignitas, they don't have a lot of money in the bank. So if Sub Rosa can get one more kill for his team here, then that may pay off in rounds to come. I see him spotting magics. He's got a Peter 50 as well, so uh, he can draw these players close. Dignitas, they, they have a lot to lose and not much to gain from killing Sub Rosa in this round. And they should know as uh, CLG won that one single round. So they'll know that they they won't be going for a force buy in this situation. Either way, just one player picked off Dignitas, so damage is somewhat limited. The second eco round from CLG. Who still have money for an AWP in the next round? Ethan, uh, well, Hayes might do as well, but I, I'm not expecting a double AWP. Cutler's been doing a reasonable job on short for the, for the time being. 10 kills for him at the moment, and you'd expect him to pick up the second AWP were there one, so I think it'll just be the one for CRG in the next round. Stack could get some kills for, from CLG. They, I like that they've got the detail of the flash in there from Hazed, but there is no traffic towards pit just yet for them to capitalize upon. Dignitas are expecting aggression, just trying to weed it out by waiting early in the round. Basic stuff, really. And it's, uh, it's also the kind of detail that can throw teams off because they show anti ecos, which may be the same round, or they may have different, you know, the variation of different pacing, as we can see this round, a very slow start, as opposed to going very quickly or at a more medium pace. And so that can really throw teams off. And you can see a CLG, they're just hoping, they're sitting there praying. They're praying that uh, Dignitas run into the A bomb site, but it's not to be just yet. 55 seconds and Dignitas setting a second player towards ramp. So they've got the split potential onto the A site. But again, you have to wonder about uh, disaster recovery. Should something go wrong? Hayes with the golden flashbang. 37 seconds remain. There's a the Molotov onto Squeaky Kooster is indeed on fire and he will uh, be mercifully killed by Dignitas. One kill, make it two for the CT side. 25 seconds to plant the bomb, and uh, I suppose that could have been worse. Cutler with the CZ will be the last to fall in this round. CLG back on the buy. Should be a good buy as well. Yeah, could have been a lot worse. That is for sure. I am enjoying it. Dim one of the teams that play the best anti-ecos. Especially, actually, I love their cobblestone anti-ecos. They're amazing. Kusta was in the flames like candy man. CLG timeout, by the way. Yeah, they got a lot to think about here. It's starting to go away from them, away from them a little bit. To be honest, again, five rounds. If you consider everything that's happened in this half, it is pretty pretty amazing. Like we had that one round where Cutler was able to get get say quad kill with the two first kills being incredibly high impact, dropping the bomb in the ladder room. Then we had Subrosa with a crazy clutch. There was another round actually where Subrosa got the final kill on Cajun B, I think, when both of the two remaining players were very, very weak. So CLG have won a lot of very, very marginal rounds and uh, had some great individual performances to bring them to this point. But Dignitas, you can see there, clawing it over the line. Magic Spoy has selected his weapon of choice. Love it. He said, screw the AKs, I'm rolling with the Krieg today. And indeed, he has selected a Krieg. I really like this. There uh, it is. Gun. It's nice. It has 100% armor penetration. That is the uh, one of the biggest statistics of that gun in comparison to the AKs and such. It's very, very accurate as well. And it is also a one-shot kill, unlike the its uh, counterpart on the CT side, the Stera Org, which is it's just crap. So we won't talk about it. Anyway. I have, I have an eye by power on my Org, which means it does plus 10 damage. Nice. Well, it's Dignitas' time now to start moving forwards. Nice little flash there into the ladder room to check that. No Cutler there this time. 
And uh, Dignitas, attached. Look at how forward their position is. And again, they are a team to look out for and to take note of when they get these four positions. They're very good at developing out of them. And that's something that a lot of teams struggle with. But Dignitas are very good at it. They're forcing CLG to, to gamble. He takes Cajun B down towards a short position, though. So do only scamble so much. And there, there's a third player rotating from CLG into the B bomb site. But the bomb's headed towards A. There's no lurker, however, for Dignitas, so it might still be hard. Magic's boy very vulnerable in this situation. If he jumps down, he's in a crossfire and he's almost guaranteed to die. How many can he entertain, though? 25 seconds, he's running away, but they'll hear that immediately. Hey, he's with another frag on the two connector. There goes MSL as well. It's falling apart for Dignitas. Magic's boy and Rubino remain 17 seconds, and surely this cannot be done. Rubino will collect the bomb, he will go down, and now it falls to Magisk. He's got himself another kill with the Krieg, actually his first kill with the Krieg, but he has no time. So all he can do now is just try to survive. He won't get any money for surviving as he is a T, but uh, he's, got, he's carrying a lot of value, so that is going to be fine for him. This is where it did go a little bit wrong. Cajun B not being able to find this pick here. And again, well played by Cutler. It's a good setup and again, a good mix up as to like how he plays around the short area, much more passive position. But he knows, you can tell how experienced he is there. He knows exactly what to look out for in, in what could be potentially dangerous, especially against a team like Dignitas and how they like to pick based on their forward positions from their mid control. So CLG showing some, some class here. And uh, Dignitas with only eight rounds is probably going to be worrisome for them. Yeah, they've just taken a timeout themselves, so we'll see what they, their approach is. In the last round of the first half, they don't opt for the AWP once again. So that makes me uh, feel like... I mean, they were they were a team that, before Cajun B, didn't really AWP on the T side of Mirage anyway. So maybe they just don't fancy it. And indeed, we do see the double AWPs coming out from CLG, at least in the last round. So Cutler, he is picking up the second one towards that short position. But he's been keeping the Dignitas players guessing. They couldn't figure out where he was in that previous round, and that caused him problems. And now things change once again. Cajun be looking for the run out of the palace here. Ethan with a great position to deal with this. And this crossfire is doing insane damage between Hazed and Ethan. Now Ethan will finally be Molotov out of position, but uh, the smoke is there to help him get escape. That's a risky bit, a risky spot. Magis with the creek, unable to find the kill in middle there. That little jump proved problematic. Oh man, Rubino getting wrecked through the smoke once again by Sabrosa. So eight to seven, the final score in the first half. And again, CLG, they've had such a rocky start. I'm surprised to see that they have so many rounds. Look, at, they fell for this bait super hard. And uh, I think it was config going for it at the end there. The pre fight didn't work out. Cutler up there with 11 kills for his side. He got some very important kills, as you mentioned, Dan, on that short B position. Config with 13, even better. But I don't know if Dignitas are going to be happy with the eight rounds they got there. No, I don't think so at all. I think they see themselves as a much better team. Uh, Mirage is such a great map for them. Uh, and again, there's just a lot of s small situations. This is why best of one can be tricky sometimes. Again, like let's say you know you lose two pistols, or there's a spot where you know there's the, or there's like a marginal spot where you lose the, the wrong round at the wrong time, or let's say you know CLG have a lot of correct guesses. Even if you're the team that will you know beat them nine out of ten times, maybe this is that one time where they get you know all those fortunate situations rolling, and, and it happens. But Dignitas are moving into the CT side, and they're very good there as well. So CLG, you know, they, they could really do this, and if they were were able to. That would be amazing for them. You know, both teams at 1-1 at the moment. Yeah, there was a tweet from Cutler before the game, which I don't think I retweeted, but maybe the E-League social media guys can find it. It was a pretty good one. Um, you know, they're feeling feeling good coming into this game. They know that the potential is there for them to take it over the line. They have the belief. And they've got a... I would say they've got a, a good score, all things considered, on their CT side. Bearing in mind they had uh, won the pistol and lost immediately afterwards. Strung some nice rounds together. See some discussion. Finally, some big discussion before we begin things on the T side for CLG. Maybe just deciding on a pistol strategy to go for. Four players on Dignitas have already bought Kevlar, whereas CLG are mostly yet to buy. Ethan Kustar picking up Kevlar. We'll see if there's a raid boss, if there are two men on uh, grenades. What it might be. We've seen some interesting, uh, again, we've seen some very interesting T strats from Virtus Pro on Mirage, where they've even had three people with grenades. But for the most part, we see two. From CLG, though, it might just be the one. Cutler is the only person, who, uh, sorry, Hazed, the only person who has not bought Kevlar just yet. 
And Dignitas with that uh, incendiary. So it's always interesting to see exactly the method behind the madness, especially considering that. I mean, I'm, I'm actually enjoying when we see some of the teams actually go for like four guys with grenades, which we've actually seen recently from some teams. Oh, I can't remember who was it again. I can't remember right now. He went actually with four grenades. How often do you back. see, though, a, a $600 Molotov on the pistol round on the CT side? It's, it, yeah, it's very, very strange. So he must, I would imagine that MSL must have a hard read on what he's expecting from CLG, and that Molotov is a hard counter one way or another. Because they've, they, he's opted for that instead of a defuse kit. Again, the Molotov on the T side, $400. The Incendiary, the equivalent, on the CT side, $600. Very rare on a pistol round. It's, it's quite a strange pickup. Okay, we get uh, Molotov there from the T side. Cajun B, though, just lurking in the window, gets himself two quick kills there. Swift headshots. And this really does leave CLG in a somewhat awkward position, even more awkward now that Kirsten has gone because they're sitting in, in apartments. They haven't really done anything just yet, and they've already lost almost everyone on the team. What do you do from this position? There's not much more than just having just going two together and trying to just pick, just just get the initial entry frags as quickly as possible. That's all you can do at this point. It is as simple as the headshots on a pistol round often enough, and Rubino's there on the angle to spot this. They still have the incendiary as well. There it goes. It's going to do a little bit of damage. Out comes Ethan. They're forced forwards into the firing lines of Dignitas on the defense here on this B-bomb site. And Sabrosa, I think he was always going to die in that situation. Cold Fig will finally finish him off and Dignitas win the pistol. So it seems the plan was to stop a B rush with the Molotov, maybe a bit too deep on that occasion, because that is a massive carpet of flame and you're going to take colossal damage if you run through that. So interesting stuff. Dignitas with a strong pistol round. Triple UMP coming out. The other two on the rifles. Lots of grenades as well for the Dignitas side. Wasn't paying attention to uh, how many players might be able to get a helmet for $350. Cajun B opting for uh, M4. No, no helmet. So we saw Hazed playing up close with no helmet. And now we see Cajun B playing the range, which is probably smarter when you don't have a helmet. So he sacrificed that for the M4. We have the Tech 9 by the Force by from CLG. So we'll see if he takes one in the face. In comes Push. The Tech 9's all over the place. Magis with a nice angle, though. And it does look like CLG are struggling to find their way forward here. Couple kills. That's going to help. But the UMP comes in from Config. Gets himself a triple kill. And now it's just all on Kuste. He's going to pick up the UMP. That did so much damage in the hands of Config. And see what he can get done. Oh, an upgrade. Yeah. KGB got taken down by a one shot with a P250. Now we'll see how much that helmet will truly cost them. The double peak from Dignitas will be enough. No plan from Kuster either. Three round lead for Dignitas, likely to be four. This was a huge play from Config. They were in a lot of trouble before that happened. Yeah, that's, that is, I mean, they make, it's made to look easy there, but it is quite hard to spray down multiple points with who that have Kevlar and Helmets with a UMP, just because it's the rate of fire on the UMP is not amazing. Like the spray, and most people aren't super on point with the spray control with it as well. So to do that so quickly was quite impressive. And it has rocked CLG into a full eco, full save, five glocks, nothing else. And who knows what the plan could possibly be here. Obviously, plant the bomb or do damage is normally what you, you, know, you aim to do, but how do you do it with just nothing? Bomb rush comes in. I guess they're hoping to pull rotation, but they haven't seen the bomb yet, so they should not be rotating out of A. Magis is looking for it, finds the two other players. Sabrosa coming close. And uh, looks like they'll all be finished off. Easy does it. I think one of the best ways to uh, get that Molotov into B is from underneath the window. Just bouncing it off the open window towards one of the bars. It's pretty quick. Seems to be uh, a bit fiddly, these Molotov deployments towards the B bomb site on these anti eco so far. Either way, it's a four round lead for Dignitas. CLG in for the buy, and maybe they'll have a better time of things than they did on the pistol round because that fell apart very quickly. Cajun B will be picking up the sniper rifle on the CT side. Config continuing with the, uh, the UMP for the time being. He's playing close towards A. He's in Palace actually already. Lots of information for the Danes. Yeah, lose and lose in foo. This is going to be interesting, actually, because if CLG decide to play a slow round, 
And if you consider that Demon's Towers have all the information of where they're standing right now, this could get very dangerous. Very, very dangerous indeed. Config is creeping closer and closer, and he'll eventually find the bomb as well. Uh, actually, it might be hidden from him because it... We'll have to see exactly where it is. Okay, he might be able to spot that. I'm not sure if that will show up on his radar, but it doesn't matter because he knows he's going to be in the back of all these players. There's one spotted. He can raise the information to his team. MSL, very forward. Uh, we'll see if he goes behind the boxes. Nasty surprise. No AK picked up, though. Cutler to trade. But now they're like, oh my god, we need to rush. Get the bomb immediately. Maybe it was spotted. Maybe there's more CTs. They they have big problems now. But what will, where will they go? 50 seconds left, mostly in the middle area. May sense weakness towards A after that pick. Yes, yeah, just bursting out of connector here. Very passive positions from Dignitas. And Cajun B, very precise. First shot from him, Magisk as well, able to shut down the connector play. That's where the bomb is as well, which forces the remainder of CLG to get into that spot and try to force or try to get the bomb a clear path out of there. Because it's not very clear at the moment. You've got Cage and me on the AWP checking the angle. They will spot the smoke grenade as well. That's going to tell them a lot about the situation. Might tell them that uh, the T's want to go into B using that smoke as cover, but they're going to go through the smoke onto the bomb site. Magisk is looking for it. Flash comes in. Crossfire is good for Dignitas, and there's no time. KGB with a good round. CLG. Yeah, it did fall apart a little bit after that flank. Yeah, they assumed that no one was on ramp or no one was likely to be on ramp. Oh, close. Lucky didn't take his teammate's head off there, although it would have been worth it, probably. Leaves nowhere off to plant. CLG in Eco Town once again. Yeah, and MSL's been uh, favoring those those deep palace pushes, or uh, sorry, deep B apps pushes. So we'll look out for those in later rounds. 20 rounds in, CLG, this game is slipping away from them at the moment. Lots of movement in the middle area from CLG, getting closer to Connector. They've got some flashes as well, so they can have a, have a butcher's hook in there. Hayes, though, going for the, the clean peak. Rubino at a nice angle. Should there be a boost? Yeah, Config able to pull some of the info here. You can see that, uh, I think I heard the, the mid, mid, mid up from the, the comments there. And you can see that Dinatas descend upon them. Magic's there with cheeky 3K. Another AK-47 of his, and that's going to be the round 13 to 7. Looking very smooth right now for Dignitas. The, their T side was definitely full of turmoil, but so far on the CT side after they won that pistol round, they have not looked back. It's just been round after round for them. Timeout from CLG as they face a six-round deficit. Time for them to come in for their buy. I do wonder if anyone's talking on their team. Oh, I mean, they should have their coach behind them, actually, so he's not someone we've seen a camera shot of. But I hope someone is... Uh, saying something about what their approach should be. There is Mr. I'm a pet. That's honestly like you just pick three words from a dictionary. <laughs> I'm yes. a pet. It's a strange, strange That's uh, going to be my nickname. Yeah, but uh, he has he has uh, given them some really some really interesting strategies. But they you know, they came for a brief, a brief time in some online matches, but seem to have disappeared again. Seeing a lot of pick play, but again, they weren't really having much of a chat that we can see at the very least. Kusta on the up once again. Fast plays in towards mid. Magic's boy could have had a well-timed grenade, but they move back from those initial nades. Dignitas with three towards B early. Maybe expecting some kind of fast play, some kind of shock and awe from CLG. See that very deep Molotov as well. Trying to ruin any timing they might have. Once again, MSL going aggressive and his teammate uh, Rubino jumping over can just bait for him. Maybe that bait will stop Subrosa from checking MSL's position. Yeah, I think that's the plan. I think it's going to work. MSL has to be patient. Has to be patient. And patience is a virtue. That's what my mum always told me, James. And it seems like it will pay off for MSL this time. So five versus four now, very early on into this half. Sorry, rather, this uh, this round. And Ethan just poking his head, peering over into the A bomb site. Doesn't really see anything there. So that's going to be interesting because CLG are about to attack this position, but does he know about Magisk below him? Seeing big calls coming out from the Danes. It's good for one kill in a trade situation. Ethan still poking from the palace, but where's the bomb? That's the question. The bomb's alone in the middle area. That's vulnerable. I mean, what does Kusa do? If he tries to go towards B, he's exposed through connector and through uh, CPL. So his options are very limited. He's going to have to run for it as well because there are 30 seconds on this clock. Cutler trying to find an opening. 
That smoke hasn't gone where it might have. MSL with a nice angle. Maybe spotting Cutler. I don't know, but there's Rubino as well, so the problems continue. MSL's off angle, not good enough for Cutler. And they're trying to rotate fast. Both teams. Kusta, how does he get the bomb down though? 14 seconds left. He may have to go for the default plant, but Rubino's still alive, so how does the bomb go down? Got holding Ooh. angles. We've got Ethan. Oh, this is so dangerous for the T, for the T side, but now they've got the bomb down and Magic's boys alone. I don't know how they managed to do that. That was very tight. Nice jumping there from Magic straight into the short position. Spots Kusta. That's one player's location discovered. But the AWP is going to be so hard to contend with from that spot for Magisk until he gets very close. And he really wants to get the frag. Nice incendiary. Will that force Kusta into a fragging position? The flick comes in. He didn't expect it. Uh, Kusta to go to his left. And now Magisk is in so much trouble. Moving forwards now. Running out of time. Running out of options. Finds the first engagement against Ethan. But that will not go so well for him. And CLG, they picked that round up. That was so awkward, that round. Quite a tough round indeed. There were bags of money on the Dignitas side, but those bags are being deployed with uh, no restriction for this round. So they've opted for five M4s. They had loads of money. They could have easily dropped an AWP, but maybe just not fancying it or a different approach. KGB had a very forward spawn, in fact, for the middle area, so... Maybe Dignitas have some surprise up their sleeve for us. CLG perhaps looking for a fast play in the meantime towards the A site. Magic Spoy there alone. Cajun B positioning towards A now that CPL's been smoked. Config close in uh, in connector as well. Kusa's lurking top mid, and we're going to have a fight on our hands. Yeah, quite the fight. They've managed to move up into very forward positions. Magic not checked for just yet. No one's checked for this position. It's quite the blind spot. This could end up being a massive play. Magic just has to wait for the perfect moment to go and strike. And he's going to allow himself to just keep it cool. Use his teammates, use the nades, and kill himself. Two frags. There's the third coming in as he drops off. And that's going to be now the bomb in the middle of nowhere. What does CLG do? They can still have a split style attack to the site. You can see Kusta in connector here. And this makes the CTs vulnerable if they're holding on A, as Magix is currently stuck in default. But he's got uh, a man advantage for his side. There's a flashbang to allow Kusta to peek out. There's MSL, but down he goes. Where are the trade fraggers? Rubino and CT. Magix boy on default. There's a flash and down Cutler goes, leaving it all down to Kusta. How does he avoid getting trade fragged in this situation? He sees the trajectory, but can he find the kill? Misses the snap. It's another round for Dignitas. Just two away now from victory. Wow, it's Magisk turns up with an ace. Pretty nifty stuff there from him. Using that blind spot, picking his moment, getting the 3k. And then able to... I loved how against the AWPA there, he just takes a really wide peak. And that's, that's really smart. Some players will be afraid and they will take a narrow peak, which allows the AWPA to actually kind of get away after missing a shot potentially. But he knows if he takes the wide peak and there's a miss, he gets the kill every time. So very, very smart. Big wide peak from Magic's boy. And now once again, COG with no money. And this is not, you can't have no money when it's when you're down so many rounds, when your opponent, your opponent has 14. Here comes the charge. Magic's boy ready for it though. Three kills. Can it be another ace? Two aces in two rounds. It could be. It could be. It might be. And it will be. The anti-eco ace. Ten kills in two rounds. And he is flying up the scoreboard. Leaping over two of his teammates. That is quite absurd. <laughs> Eat them up all day. Small grin there. Just caught it in uh, in time there with the, the switch to that shot onto Magisk. Uh, yeah, now it's... Uh, Game point here for Dinatas about to, or match point rather for Dinatas, about to take this one. And CLG, they have not that much money really. It's not not looking optimal for them. As you can see, the, there is a tactical timeout. CLG discussing how best to use their money for this final, what could be a, a very final round for them, unless they can do as they did yesterday and bring things back. When I think, yeah, they were down 10 rounds, I believe, against match point. And yesterday they were able to bring it back. Against Dignitas, though, I'm, I'm not so sure. They are going to need picks in this round. They've got themselves three AKs, the AWP, Cutler onto the Galil. Kusa going deep. Very dangerous uh, in terms of grenades when you go on, those, on the ramp early. Hard to see through the Molotov as well. Looking for a gap in the corner of the smoke. Not quite seeing Magic's boy in time, though. And there goes AWP on CLG. That was a very important weapon. Maybe it'll be collected. Ethan still lurking towards uh, A in Palace. Two towards A would suggest that were their ultimate intentions. 
and indeed there's a long rotation. Config, though, may have bad timing, ultimately, because Sub Rosa is about to emerge. He's walking. Now he's running. He's got his knife out. And that's just horrible timing for Sub Rosa instead. This is falling apart for CLG. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what you do from this position. Two players left. They'll come out for the peak oh. there. Oh, two quick kills there onto the A bomb site. All of a sudden, it's a two versus three situation. However, there is a flank at play coming in from Config. It will come in eventually. He's going to pick his moment wisely. Again, it's the last. Well, basically, this just could, this could be it. They just need to win the round somehow. They don't care that the bomb goes down. And MSL, he's going to get caught by a forward play there. Ballsy stuff from Ethan. Back into the two on two here. As Dylan has to wait for the perfect moment. Look how many places Cutler has to cover, though. He sees the grenade, so he knows what's going on. He goes for the pot shot. He misses, but he's still got time to get there. The second one in. Down goes Config. It's down to Rubino. He's in a crossfire. He knows where Cutler is. Smo uh, Molotov towards the five boxes. Got a second Molotov as well, but he can't afford to draw anymore. There's Ethan. CLG still in this. That was a two versus five, James. That was a two versus five. How do you win that? They didn't even have any four positions. They had to come out of Palace and Slope, and they still somehow find a way to win the round. That's absolutely absurd. That should never be allowed to happen. I can't feel good for Dimitas, but it's fine. They've got six more chances. As far as their money goes, though, it is all depleted once again. It's so crazy with, with uh, that smoke being so close to Cutler, and he, he goes for the shot in the smoke and misses, and still manages to get the second one off in time. Madness. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was very over, very, very over. Now we have CLG all rallying up in the apartments, and it's remains to be seen as to what the end game is for, is looking like for them here in this round. Ethan just taking a cursory glance down the underpass, making sure that there's no pushing players. Ooh, is Hayes going for the short smoke, perhaps? No, he's not. <laughs> there's a there's a short smoke you can do. The only person I've seen that actually do it is Guardian. Between the uh, the bricks people stack on and the op opposing wall to isolate any players if the CTs are too deep towards mid, but they're not. Dignitas with Rubino and MSR very deep into the B bomb site. There's that smoke in the middle of the site, which can help them, help them get the bomb down. Might split the CTs as well. Rubino half blind, but still gets the kill. The rest of CLG very late because of those responsive Molotovs from Dignitas, and that's allowing Dignitas to rotate as well. There goes MSR, but there are two more players here for the CT side. And Magis is trying to actually flank at the moment. He's going to cut off the flank, and they were trying to escape. There's 40 seconds to play with. They have to go underpass now, and Magic knows it. What he has to do is hold these two openings, and Dinatas have control over all the spots that the CLG can go. They can divert them as they please. And CLG now, they're back into the apartments. They're going to go for the play onto this B bomb site, but it, it really, there's what nowhere to go. They've got no time. They've got no time. They've got no time. They've got no grenades. They've got to run for it. There are four CTs around this site. The net is super tight indeed. It's like a last episode of The Wire. Shoots any season. Oh, nice by Ethan, but he's got eight seconds. He still needs to get the bomb down. He has to deliver here. And surely he can't do it. No, Config's there to finish off the day for CLG. Dignitas, 16 to nine. Ethan with a lot of clutch performances there, but uh, that was a little bit too much to ask for. Indeed, I think that was always the way it was supposed to go. Dignitas, they handily defeat CLG. It was a troublesome first half for them.